Welcome everyone to another edition of the VMblog Expert Interview Series. And today we're joined by Orr Weiss, the co-founder and the CEO of Permit. Welcome, it's great to speak with you today. It's a pleasure to be here, David. Excited to talk with you. So I, I guess really just to kind of jump, uh, jump right off and kick things off, uh, mm -hmm. why don't you begin by just giving viewers who may not have heard of Permit a quick pitch on the company and, uh, and maybe explain some of the problems that you're solving for folks. Sure, so Permit is a full stack permissions as a service solution. Uh, it's an authorization solution, so it comes right after your authentication. Uh, I got to it from my own pain point, my own problems. In my previous company, I ended up rebuilding access control five times in a company that wasn't even three years old. And I just said, well, this is stupid. I don't want to do it once, let alone five times. And it kept surprising me at every turn. Like I thought I was done with it and, and demands from customers and business partners kept changing what I had to build. And the problem here is that one, it's becoming harder with the move to microservices and to the cloud. You need a bit of authorization in every little bit of software that you build. And it's also getting more and more complex as we need more complex policies. Everyone starts with admin and not admin. But he moved to R back and A back and we back, and it just continues to grow. Um, and I realized, and my co-founder realized that we've been building this thousands of times throughout our career, and there is no point that we should be rebuilding this over and over. It should be one-stop shop, something that you can bake into your software, and know that it will grow with you, facing the complexities both of scale and uh, of the software requirements themselves. So you as a developer can focus on your own product. Um, so that's, that's what we focus on for me. We give you access control for your product uh, so you won't have to unless you want to. And it, I mean, it seems like such an obvious problem that needs to be addressed. How are companies building permissions into their applications today? And, and I guess really, do you have any uh, competitors out there to speak of? Good question. So up till now, it was mostly build on your own, and I'd say that's our biggest competitor. Uh, developers that have built something have appreciation to what they've built, even though it doesn't meet the current standards anymore or meet their, even their requirements anymore. So there is uh, something to be said for the gradual process that the overall market needs to go through. And I think authorization now is going through a similar change to the one that authentication is going before. If you go five, seven years, at most 10 years back and talk to companies, people would say, authentication, no, that's too critical of an element. I wouldn't trust it to a third party company. And nowadays it's obviously the complete opposite. People know that there are a lot of pitfalls and minute issues that if you don't cover right, you will end up both rebuilding and suffering for, even in the form of security vulnerability. Um, so authentication has really kind of changed the way we think about how we integrate critical elements into our software. And um, now that authentication is mature enough, the same is coming for authorization. And uh, we, alongside a very small cohort of young companies, are leading this new evolving space. And it's actually very interesting to see how it's still evolving and changing. And, you know, thinking about uh, open source, uh, I know one of the projects your company is behind is called Opal. Uh, mm -hmm. So how do you as a company promote both your company, your solutions, and an open source project all at the same time? And do you think that causes you any kind of conflict? That's a terrific question. So maybe also touching on your previous question. So what else, aside from building on your own, what you can do today is also build alongside with open source. And as this space is evolving, as I said, I think there is still a lot of discussions that we need to do as, I don't know, as a community, as humanity, to decide uh, how, what is the right way to build this infrastructure, this joint infrastructure for access control, which is critical for a lot of the things we're building. And by building open source ourselves and contributing to open source ourselves, it enables us to uh, take part in the conversation and also lead the conversation itself and have as many people as possible kind of chime in and make sure we build the right thing. 
in regards to potential conflicts, you are correct that there is that potential with uh, open source and, and your product. Uh, but I think it's really about structuring it correctly. So there used to, used to be a model called open core where you build your ma main parts of your product is open source and uh, release them publicly. I think because of the change in speed in the market, this model doesn't work anymore. Uh, you can look at companies like Elastic that had to pivot to be a security company because other companies executed on sell, uh, providing their service better than they did, or companies like Docker that ended up uh, having friction of their own market because their open source uh, ate too much of their go-to market for them. Um, so I think open, so open core is not a, as ideal model anymore, but we are looking at other open source models, specifically with Opal, we're looking at a model that we like to call open foundation. So instead of Opal being the core of a product, it's a foundation we build our product on top. Um, so there's still a significant difference between Pyramid uh, and all the values that, and services and capabilities that we provide on top, and Opal itself, which is mainly an infrastructure component that enables the rest of the uh, cool stuff that we bring to the table. And I think with that, we have good balance between um, building our product and our go-to-market and also uh, creating a good community with real value across the stack for, our, uh, for the people interacting with us. And, you know, you kind of touched on this a bit, but uh, when, you know, thinking about uh, the whole uh, build versus buy conversation that, that, you know, obviously takes place everywhere, uh, you know, as a serial mm -hmm. entrepreneur yourself, how do you decide when it's right to buy uh, a solution versus build something yourself? That's a very good question. I'll try to break it down to two parts. One, how can I, how can I, how I address this? Like when I talk to people about uh, what I advise them to do and how we, I help them think about the situation. And uh, also I, how I address it myself. I think, and I'll start with the, with the latter part. Um, I think as we're continuing to build software, it's constantly becoming more complex and with greater scale. It's kind of very obvious at this point. And the more you move forward, it's obvious that you need to specialize. You can't keep building all of the common components over and over again. Uh, so I think the main question that any company should ask themselves is, is what I'm building here at the moment, is this a core part of, of my product? Is it a proprietary element that, I, uh, that is at the core of what I'm doing? Or is it something that is on the side? And as much as you can, if it's not in your core, try and get at least an open source offering, if not a service that you can use for it. And I definitely, uh, in my conversations with our own R&D, and uh, when I'm still writing code myself, I always aim for that balance, trying to be focused on the core. That being said, when I talk to our customers or people that seek advice, I always tell people it's, it's uh, um, to each his own and each application, each company is a snowflake and you need to find the right balance for yourself. And so when I talk to people, I tell them there are three things uh, around permissions that we can help you with and bring to the table. We can help you with best practices, just concepts that can help you if you decide to build on your own to stick to these elements, it will help you um, not do the classic mistakes, not fall into pitfalls, and also be able to upgrade more easily if you decide to do so later. Uh, to open source, uh, so we would obviously help with adopting our own open source, but we also are happy to recommend other open source projects that we see and love in the space. I mentioned OffZ and SpiceDB a lot, and I mentioned also an OPA, obviously, a lot of great products that we also build upon uh, with Permit. And lastly, I also said, yeah, we also have a SaaS offering that might be uh, something that you want to consider. And I think another interesting element in this is time. So there's the right decision and the right sweet spot for each point in time. And when you make the decision, you should also think about the trajectory throughout time. There's what you need now, and there's what you're going to need in a month. And you then should also plan for the transition between those two points. But if you take the best practices into account, take into account all the different solutions that you can have and have a trajectory of how you move between them if you need to, 
I think that's a fine choice. And, uh, um, and a lot of times I tell people, yeah, if you feel this is right, uh, I'm with you. You shouldn't buy the product. You shouldn't take the SaaS offer. Um, because I believe in having conversations as engineers first and actually caring about the core value uh, than just trying to push things on people. I hate it when people do it to me. So I would hate to do it to someone else. Well, look, this has been really great. And I know we touched on a number of things or, uh, you know, I want to thank you for your time today. And I'm sure viewers who, you know, are watching this are going to want to learn more about some of the things we've talked about and touched on. Where's the best mm -hmm. place to go uh, for them to find out more uh, on some of these things or, you know, other things about the company? Yeah, sure. So you can find us easily at permit.io. On that website, you'll find three interesting things. One, uh, self-service. You can just try our product out. It doesn't cost anything. There's no friction or signups. Just log in and start playing with it. Uh, the other two things are uh, a link to our Slack community. You can just uh, log in and send me direct messages there. I'm always happy to talk to fellow engineers and fellow uh, security protect practitioners. I'm also a, a SNCC ambassador, so also help people in that capacity. Um, so I really encourage people to reach out. And uh, another way you can reach out, which is also on the website, is uh, to schedule a call with me. So there's a Calendly link. You just pick a time, and uh, and I'll just show up on a Zoom call with you. And then you can uh, and then we can chat about uh, uh, permissions, security, uh, whatever cool thing you're trying to build. Um, and obviously, you can also reach me out on GitHub and Twitter. I'm Orwise. O R W E I S across the space, GitHub, LinkedIn. So yeah, just uh, reach out. I'm always happy to talk. Perfect. Well, great. I, uh, once again, I appreciate your time today and I look forward to uh, what you guys uh, produce in the future. And hopefully we'll have another conversation when that happens. Sounds like a plan. Thank you very much, David. All right. Take care.